usually we're covering some bigger parts of the hiring process, but I'm getting a lot more questions about specific individual things that individuals worry about as they go through their hiring process. And that today is going to be tattoo policies. Let's discuss. Hi, welcome. Before we get started, I have two gifts down in the description for you. Whether you're listening on YouTube or on the audio podcast, they're both in the description. One is the Getting Started Workshop. It breaks down each part of the hiring phase so that you know what to look for when you're going through your hiring process. And it has some hidden bonuses in there for you as well. Additionally, if you have something specific to your hiring process and you want to know, what do I do? Does this affect me? what are my chances? Jump on a free coaching call with myself. I will be glad to sit down and work through any of the questions you have. Now, tattoo policies and how do they affect you? If you were asking 20 years ago, tattoo policies are, were, were critical. I mean, you couldn't have any type of exposed tattoo, anything above the neck, anything below pretty much the the elbow or even below a short sleeve shirt was was a disqualifying factor that is not the case these days but that doesn't mean you get a free pass for any tattoo or any placement of a tattoo so let's break it down a little bit where are the spots that you shouldn't have tattoos anything that can't be covered up is still a good it's a term i'm looking for practice right it's still a good practice so anything below the wrist anything above the neck or the collar line those, those are going to be frowned upon. Are they disqualifying factors immediately? Absolutely not. Some departments, you may be ineligible. It doesn't make, make it a disqualifying factor. It's only disqualifying if you apply, but you may be ineligible. So when you apply to a department, it's always critical to do that prep work I'm always talking about. Prep work is critical because if you apply to a department that has a tattoo policy that you don't meet and they have to disqualify you for it, you have to disco- disclose that to another department. So keep that in mind. The next thing is, is anything above that collar line, below that that long sleeve, that wrist line, you're going to be looked at and you're going to be evaluated in a certain way, depending on what those tattoos are. If you have a full sleeve coming down your arm and it and it breaks that wrist line onto your hand, that's actually going to look, depending on what the sleeve is, right? That's actually going to look a little bit better than just having some random hand tattoos. Uh, I don't, it's just psychologically, that's the way it works. You know, officers with full sleeves are, and that are more mural based. I'm not talking anything obscene or, or vulgar. You might as well just work on getting those removed right now, but or covered up. But anything that that's kind of a mural based uh, sleeve, I wouldn't worry about it. I want to, I mean, some departments have, have antiquated tattoo policies, but that is so far and, and few between these days. I wouldn't worry about that. What I would worry about is just having random hand tattoos on your fingers. I'm not talking about a wedding band tattoo. That's not an issue. That's they'll ask you to disclose it. Hey, what's this mean? It's a wedding band for me and my spouse or my significant other. Cool. Got it. Good to go. Then, but having, having, you know, you know, badass across your across your hands or your fingers, you're going to want to get those removed. And and your hand tattoos, you're not going to want to try and cover them up, right? You just want to get those removed. Um, anything that's that's vulgar in nature. If it's something as if you have a you know a bird or a dove or something on the inside palm right here or something elegant on your on the tops of your hands, that's a little bit better. But that by itself still stands out the most and still can convey a level of unprofessional conduct. Now, whether you agree with it or not, because I know the comment sections are just going to blow up right now, but whether you agree with it or not, that's what society has deemed social, sociably acceptable, right? Especially when it comes to the law enforcement counterparts or their law enforcement professionals. So hand tattoos don't necessarily convey the most professional individual and you're applying for one of the hardest positions out there to obtain and they're looking for the highest caliber individuals so keep that in mind you know if 
if you have a hand tattoo that you that you really don't like or that you got when you were younger or or at a different point in your life and it doesn't represent who you are now and you can get it removed that would be my suggestion i'm not telling you to go out there and get it removed i'm not saying you have to get it removed i'm just saying that would be my suggestion if it doesn't conform to to professional conduct as i said if you have a full sleeve and it kind of comes down into your hand a bit and it's it's non vulgar and and nothing nothing kind of distasteful you're you're pretty much better off because it's almost looked at artwork these days i'm not against tattoos you can't tell in this video but in other videos i have a half sleeve um it's not completely covered by by my short sleeve shirts i have another tattoo that goes around my entire neck a full necklace and then i have another tattoo i have a chest piece right here on my chest um, all these different walks of life, all of them are very, very sentimental to me and mean something, but so I will never get rid of them. But at the same point in time, they're all concealable in, in a professional atmosphere. When I was doing protective details for presidential appointees, uh, it was, it was critical that I, I have the utmost profession. So I'm in a full suit, long sleeves, doesn't matter the time of the year. I'm in a full suit, long sleeves not to hide my tattoos, but to convey a professional atmosphere, a professional individual while performing this functions. And it could be the same thing with, uh, with any other assignment that I'm put on. Now, if I'm on, say I'm, I'm doing bike patrol, right? A very big, rigorous activity and I'm out there and I'm pedaling in full gear and it's hot out, I'm, I'm wearing short sleeves. I'm, I'm going to let my tattoo show it. it. That doesn't matter as long as my agency's fine with it because I'm, I'm not ashamed of it. You know, it, none of, none of my tattoos are, are distasteful or vulgar or, or even gang related in nature. So I want to beat yourself up too much about it, but if you do have something that, that is kind of distasteful, I'm just going to stick with this term right now, distasteful or unprofessional, your best bet is to get it covered up or removed. And, and that is honestly the, the really two options that you have other than just going through the hiring process and saying, Hey, this is what it is. Now, if you have anything that can be construed as gang affiliated or anything that is unprofessional and understand I'm covering everything in unprofessional, everything is covered under unprofessional. If it's something that, that is, slang or curse word or or just not even not even an elegant piece right something that is just skull and crossbones on your hands that that would be unprofessional right uh a a naked woman you know up on your up on your your wrist or your neck that's that's just distasteful and unprofessional. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. And, and I'm being, I'm being completely candid here. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. It matters how the agency who's hiring you feels about it. Because remember, you're asking them to hire you, not the other way around, right? You, you want to work for them. They don't, they don't want to come work for you. You have to conform to them. And that's law enforcement. You, you have to conform to them. You want to change policies. You do that after you're on the inside. Right. You can't do that from from the outside, especially when it comes to something like this, that that doesn't convey a prof professional atmosphere. All right. So that's hands. Hands are are one of the least concerning ones right now. You shouldn't have anything down below the wrist. But if you do, as long as it's professional, if you were a sailor and you have two cross anchor anchors on your on your hand, or you have a shell back if, if you're in the Navy and, and you cross the equator a few times, what, whatever it is, if you're in the military and you have something military related or something on your hands, chances are they're not going to, not going to bother you about that as long as it's tasteful. Um, same thing, wedding band tattoos, or even, um, or even something as simple as, as a, an animal, something, something tasteful hands you're gonna be okay you might be flirting the line but check with their policies first if they say nothing below the wrist line and nothing above the neckline don't apply to that department now anything above the neck right so anything on the neck that ex is exposed beyond the collar you want to be very careful about this one because once you get to that point that's the first thing someone sees is your face um you're going to have an issue getting through the hiring process with something along those lines for the sheer fact that when you go to interview, if they can see it, 
they're going to ask you about it. They're going to say, Hey, what? I see you got a tattoo on your neck. What is that? Right. And they may be, they might may be nice about it, or they may be firm about it and say, Hey, we're, you know, we support tattoos and we have a great tattoo policy here, but what do you have on your, on your neck? And if you have a rattlesnake wrapping around your neck with the, with the rattlers going down your shoulders or something along those lines or a snake or, or anything, it doesn't matter. It's, it's not going to convey well. It's just, it's just not, uh, there's some departments that, that would hire you for that for, for undercover work, but yeah, as starting off as a patrol officer or deputy, it's, it's just not going to happen. Um, you can argue with me. I'm just telling you it's, it's not going to happen. Uh, now getting to the face, face tattoos are almost always a disqualifier, right? Anything on the face, if it's something cosmetic, um, that's different, right? If it's something that, that you had to have because of cosmetic, that's something that's different, but anything that's a, that's a face tattoo, obviously teardrops, anything that conveys any type of slang terminology, gang affiliation, your, your just best bet is to get it removed. Um, face tattoos are, are some agencies may not even have a policy against it, but good luck getting through your, your hiring process uh, with your board interview, maybe your chief's interview, and then even your psychological interview, because a psychologist is going to say, Hey, what, what provoked you to get something permanent put on your face like that, that, that stands out dramatically. Um, what makes you want to be so bolsterous to do something that, that way? And they're just going to dig into to a question such as those. So tattoo policies are very simple. A lot of departments, as I said before, have knocked it, knocked it completely down. And they said, Hey, we're good with all tattoos, as long as they're professional, non-vulgar, uh, and, and non-discriminative. We're fine with it as long as they can be covered and concealed. Um, if they can't, they'll look at them as a, a, as per basis, right? So depending on what they are as, as you are a candidate and then anything you start getting above the neck or on the face, I would, uh, I would look at your options for whether or not you want to keep those. That's just my opinion here and my professional observation from what I've seen over my years in law enforcement, but that's where I'm at with it. I think at the end of the day, it's just, you know, the society wants that professional atmosphere. Departments want that professional atmosphere, especially because the last thing they want is, is another thing for, for media to get a hold of if an officer messes up or, or goes down that line. I hope this helps. Listen, those gifts are still down in description. It is the Getting Started Workshop. It's a quick workshop. It's going to walk you through every part of the hiring process that you know, every phase, plus some hidden bonuses in there. And then also, if you have something specific to you, to your hiring process, any questions that you need answered or any concerns you have, whether it's about tattoos, anything whatsoever, jump on a free coaching call with me. Be glad to help you as best I can. Stay safe, and I will see you next time.